Do you feel unhappy with where you're at creatively, professionally? Then consider trying this unexpected attribute on for size. My name is Jenny Velarde. I'm a psychotherapist and just as importantly, I'm an artist. It can be oh so tempting to think, I will be happy when I'm in that position or this isn't where I wanna be now, but when I'm there, then that will change everything. It can be easy to think that it's only when we step into our dream situation that we'll find true pleasure within our work. But I'm here to make the case that perhaps it's the mere opposite. Over the span of my professional life, I've worked in so many different environments, clinically, creatively, nonprofits, the service industry, the entertainment industry. And when I think back to all those environments and the vast array of colleagues that I've encountered, there is one attribute that rises to the top in noting the colleagues that really made a lasting impact. And furthermore, excitingly, the colleagues that advanced quickly within their careers and or became beloved fixtures of their environments. Here is that unexpected quality, delight. Whatever the work is at hand, bringing delight to their environment, offering delight through what they do, and finding delight for themselves in their work. Bringing, offering, and finding delight. My favorite definition of delight is this, the power of affording pleasure. As we examine the attribute of delight in this episode, we're framing it as the power to offer up the experience of pleasure to ourselves and to others through our work and the way that we approach it. So what does delight have to do with generating creativity? And even more specifically, getting to the next level in our professional careers as artists, as creators. To these questions, a dear friend of mine comes to mind. I'll share a little bit about him. I first met this friend while working on a small scale independent film. I was working in front of the camera as the lead protagonist and he was behind the camera working initially as a production assistant. Though on that shoot, I watched him quickly advance from being a PA to becoming the true right-hand man of the director. In no time, he became indispensable to the project and quite frankly, seemed to be the glue that was keeping everything together. Now, most certainly, he brought a variety of incredible assets to his work. He was reliable, he was consistent, he was diligent, thorough, though the one element that he brought to the table, I remember at a visceral level, is he seemed to delight in everything that he did. He offered it out to those around him and appeared to find it for himself in what he was doing, bringing, offering, and finding delight. Now, going back to that definition, the power that he brought in affording pleasure through the way that he approached his work made a very real world impact on actually getting the shots, keeping things running smoothly and setting a pleasurable and creative tone for the team. On a personal note, I remember his delightfulness made me feel calmed, comforted, and like things were under control on a shoot that without this element could have easily felt very much out of control and stressful. And even more memorable, nothing seemed to be a throwaway task to him. He brought a sense of delight, affording pleasure to everything he did on that shoot. In fact, I can remember specifically a moment in which I watched him from afar engaging in the simple act of setting up water bottles on a table. 
I was roped into another task at the moment, but my focus kept steering back to watching him. You could just see that what he was doing, he did it with purpose and care. It just showed through his expression, through his body language. He presented as calm and thoughtful. He did it methodically. As I watched him work, he truly presented as bringing real delight to that simple task. That moment happened over 15 years ago, and yet I've gone back to it in my mind so many times. I've used it as a model. The delight he brought into what could have been just a throwaway task in setting up those water bottles has been such a teacher in absolutely all kinds of work that I've taken on over the years. And with my friend, I will tell you, I watched him through just a couple of years apply this mentality to absolutely everything that he did, eventually leveraging himself into working at one of the most influential film studios in the world, working alongside some of the most prolific creators of the film industry. A step further, the story of my friend actually has a real implication at a cognitive level too, as neuroscience is now showing. As researchers in a recent study through Penn State discovered, as conducted with 240 people, those participants who upon waking up in the morning focused on how stressful or difficult the day ahead was going to be, actually demonstrated a detrimental impact to their cognitive brain functioning later on in the day. Their research showed participants anticipating stress ahead struggled significantly with tasks associated with working memory. Cognitive tasks in which you need to work through something in the moment in real time. It's kind of like the mental scratch pad for us. Now this was unlike the results of those who framed the day ahead differently without stressful anticipation. Again, to note, this study showed that this impact to the brain didn't just happen due to actual stressful events experienced. It happened when participants anticipated stress, imagined that the day ahead would be stressful, even if the stress never came. With my friend and that film shoot, there would have been many opportunities to both experience stress and anticipate that the day ahead would be stressful. Yet despite all this, he presented with consistency in framing his own emotional experience by bringing, offering, and finding delight in his approach to work. So remember when that familiar and understandable thought comes to mind of, I'll be happy when dot dot dot, consider bringing a sense of delight into the work, no matter where you're at now. It's a choice, it's a practice, and remember, it's a power. The power of affording pleasure. And let's be real, even when that dream job comes, odds are there will be parts of it that will be unpleasant. Though by choosing to bring a sense of delight to our work, to offer it out to those around us, and to find it for ourselves in what we're doing. In setting up water bottles, we are aiding in shaping our emotional experience. I'm choosing the power within delight because it makes me feel better right now. From today, I would love for you to consider where do you currently bring delight to the work that you do? I'd love to hear in the comments, where have you brought delight to your job, to your artistry, and it's made an impact? And where might you want to infuse more? I would love to hear. Bring delight into your work now. Whatever you do, you will radiate. You will be adding pleasure to your life and the lives around you. And when it comes to professional progress, on a very practical, savvy level, Nothing promotes you within your creative career better than that. Now go and create. You were created to. Now here's the thing 
about procrastination. With the right tools, it can be our greatest helper. Without the right tools, it will take us down, shamelessly stealing days, months, years, and even decades from us. And it doesn't stop on its own. The procrastination system, six hours, five segments, 20 chapters, custom built tools and concepts reinforced by up-to-date neuroscience. Turn your inaction into traction. The link's below. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you. If this episode was useful, I would love for you to hit the like button and perhaps share it with somebody. For more tool-based, actionable, creative content, please make sure to subscribe. Also, if you have a question about creativity or the artist role that you would like to have answered, please leave it in the comments below and it may be featured in an upcoming episode.